Hey everyone, Olaf here, and today I'm going to show you how to make this cool animation using random colors in Blender. It's going to be a pretty quick and easy tutorial, so I hope you like it, and let's get started. Okay, so let's start off by deleting the default light, the lamp, and I'm going to select it with uh, right click, and then click X to delete. Then you want to go to Cycles Render, so switch to Cycles Render from Blender Render, and then you want to select the cube. Click S to scale it down, because we're going to have a lot of them. And left click to confirm. Now go into the settings, the modifiers, and you want to go into array. And add 20. And then you want to increase the um, length on the x-axis. Okay, so let's add another array for the y-axis. Then go down and make the y-axis 1.1. And increase the numbers to 20. Okay, so let's click G then X to grab it on the x-axis to make it in the middle and then click G Y to grab it on the y-axis. Use the middle mouse button to uh, look under and then left click to add a 3D cursor. This is going to be the place where our plane spawns. So click S to scale it up and I think you can scale it up even more. And then you want to click G set to grab it on the set axis, like this. And now we have the floor. So you can scale it up even more with the S. Okay, so let's go back to the cubes and right click on the cubes. And then we want to go into array and click apply on both of them. So that we have applied the uh, modifier. Then we want to go into the material and we're going to make the random materials. So add a diffuse and then go into node editor and click on the material icon and now you want to add two nodes and you're going to use search shift a to go into the search and then write in object info and then you want to add another node another way to go in and search is to click on add and then go down to search and you want to search for hue saturation and this is a very easy node setup you're just gonna connect random to hue and color to color and that's all and just add a color and we're going to animate this later but for now we're just gonna add one color so make it blue doesn't really matter just make it whatever color you want you go back to the 3d view and before we start looking at the colors, I'm going to add some uh, lighting. So add a plane, then you want to click G to grab, R to rotate, and S to scale. Okay, so let's start off by adding an emission material. And increase the strength to 5. Then you want to go to the top view, click numpad 7, and go into rendered mode. So from solid to rendered. Now we're going to duplicate this plane so that we have uh, two of them. So Shift D to duplicate and click R then set to rotate it on the set axis and scale it down a little bit with S. Now click Shift D to duplicate again. This is going to be our backlight. Click R set to rotate it on the set axis and S to scale it down. Now we have three lights and we have enough lighting for now. So let's start adding the random material to the cubes themselves. So go to solid mode, select the cubes, go into edit mode, and then you want to click P and separate by loose parts. And now we have a lot of different cubes with random material. And if you go into rendered mode again, you can see that they now all have random materials and a lot of different colors. And now it's time to go into the node editor and start animating the random colors so that we get an animation. So click I to keep from the color. And then we would go to frame 20 and change the color. So change it to whatever you want. And then click I to keyframe. Go to frame 40 again. Select a new color. Let's make it uh, yellow this time. Click I to keyframe, 
go to frame 60, select a new color, and I'm going to repeat this process until about frame 120. So just select a lot of different colors so that we have a cool random color change animation at the end. So just two more colors. I can make this one purple, eye to keyframe, and let's add the last color. Let's make it purple, maybe. Yeah, purple. And then click I to keyframe. Okay, so now we have the animation from frame 1 to 120. So just change the end frame to 120. Enter. And then go to 30 FPS. I think that's better. And 3D view. And if we go back to frame 1 and go into rendered mode. Oops, I misclicked. I'm just going to go to rendered mode. And if we now go down and click play and see through the animation, you can now see that they gradually switch between the colors. And a way to change what kind of animation you want to have is to go to graph editor and click T to choose what kind of uh, animation graph you want. So, okay, so we're going to start off by selecting linear and see how it goes. This means that the animation will have the same speed between each color and keep the same speed throughout the colors instead of like slowly and quickly and change it between them. It's just going to be the same speed between the colors throughout the animation. And let's go back to uh, the graph editor and try some different animation types. So click on the cube again, go to graph editor and I'm going to click T again to choose what kind I want. And we can choose constant. That means that at the keyframe it's going to switch between the colors but it's not going to be gradually between the colors like in the other animation. If you remember the animation that was in the beginning of the video with the constant switching, that was actually the animation that we got from uh, using constant in this exact file. So if we go back to graph editor, we're going to try the last one or the last one I've many times, but I'm just going to go through these three. So click Bezier. This one is like slow in the beginning, faster, and then slow again. And that is the speed of how they switch between the colors. So if you animate this type, you're going to see it's very different from linear. Okay, I think I'm going to show you one of the last ones. And in the graph editor, you can obviously choose from a lot of them. I'm just going to uh, show you one of these easing by strength graphs, which are usually like exponential and changes very differently from um, Bezier and Linear. And as you can see, this also gives another result. And you can obviously just choose whatever kind you want. But I think for this animation, I'm just going to use Constant, because that's where I think it's the prettiest. So go back to constant and then go back to 3D view. And now I'm going to start adding some more materials, especially to the floor. Go to object mode and I'm going to increase the strength of the emission. I might change that later, but I'm just going to see how it looks. I think it looks good and you can also change the background color. I might make it a little bit darker, a little bit lighter. You can choose this and have the color you want. Okay, so I right click to select the floor, added a new material, and then went into glossy. The reason I like the glossy uh, shader is because you can actually see like the reflection of the cubes and the colors, which makes it look cooler. And just hold on shift to select the planes, click G and set to grab them on the set axis, and click S to scale them afterwards. Numpad zero to go to the camera, select the camera, and then click Shift F to go into fly cam mode. And you can use W, A, S, and D to move around the scene. And when you go back to rendered mode now, you can see how it's going to look at the end. And I think it looks really pretty. And I'm just going to do a few more adjustments before I make the final render. So go to the world settings and I'm just going to make it a little bit darker for the world background. And I can also select the uh, planes 
pre emission. I'm just gonna make the light a little bit softer, a little bit weaker, maybe around six or five, or even four if you want to. I think that's too dark, I'm just gonna make it five. Yeah, I think that looks okay. You can just make it lighter if you want to increase the strength. So increase the resolution quality to 100%. And then you should increase the sampling. And I'm going to increase it to 200. I think that's enough. And if you want to make this into an animation, you just go to H264 and then select encoding and uh, go to formats and make it MPEG4 which means MP4 basically but for now I'm just gonna save it as PNG because I like to animate them in PNG and convert them into an MP4 file later so just select the camera click G to grab and then you can just click animation and all the PNG images will save to the TMP output uh, folder. And that's it. Thank you. This is the final animation. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And thanks for watching.